Howdy folks, welcome back to 50 Knock Mile Arc. Today we have an opposite flight from what we had in our last flight. The last flight we took our big 727 and flew a very short flight. Today we're going to take the opposite aircraft, a little Cessna 152 trainer aircraft, and we're going to fly a long flight. We're going to do a cross-country flight across Estonia. Um, I wanted to do a slow, casual, zen type of flight where I can just kind of relax and look at stuff for a while, maybe upwards an hour and a half even possibly. So we're going to take this thing. We are then at Echo Echo Kilo Alpha, which is Karla in Estonia. It's an island on the west side of Estonia. And then we're going to fly east all the way to Tallinn. I do have the Echo Echo Tango November payware scenery there. If you recall a while back, I said I bought that scenery because there's a piano factory there, the Estonia Piano Factory, and it's modeled in the freeware, or in the payware scenery, so we went there and we had a look around the city. I think we're actually in this aircraft too, now that I think about it. Anyway, so we're going to fly that way. We are going to use instruments. We're going to take the VOR approach, the published VOR approach. I found it on the Zep Chepazin website, and um, we're going to have a fun time. Of course, what you're watching is edited down version. I'm not going to make you watch all two hours of this part, plus the actual flight time, plus the landing. You get to see the condensed version, but um, that's the plan. So actually, our destination is actually that way. Across the ocean, we're on an island, and there's more Estonia over there. You just can't see it. And then Finland, well, it'd be that way, but definitely way too far to see. So that's where we are in the world, and um, I'm just looking at this nice sunrise and the fog in those trees. Oh my gosh, this looks like a photograph. You know, we were at the General Aviation ramp, um, and we're going to get started. So those of you who don't know the aircraft, this is the Carnado C-152, Cessna 152. Um, it is payware. It's very nice aircraft. It's a trainer. In real life for the most part and I have read that this aircraft is so realistic compared to the real thing that um, it's just like flying the real thing I guess I've never even been in one of these I've never been in anything other than commercial jets and the beaver in real life so I'll have to take people's word for it actually let's keep that window open a little bit and let's pull this out for some air and let's pull this down because of the Sun all this stuff moves around and it's fun, fun to clicky clicky. Nothing up here does anything though. I already checked that out. Check to doot. Um, nothing in the back, just a two seater. That stuff, no, this stuff doesn't move around, does it? No, I don't think so. There's one aircraft that I have where all the cargo moves around as you fly. It's kind of fun. Anyway, so there you have a look around. Very simple, no autopilots. I'm going to have to hand fly this thing for a very long time. First thing we're going to do though is get our weight and fuel going because. Two, three hour flight time. I think that's maximum. Um, doesn't give you distance though. I guess distance wouldn't be an accurate representation. Hmm. Anyway, flight time is what we'll do. I predict this will take an hour and a half. So I'm going to go just over two hours of fuel. And what else? That's it. There we go. I took my shots, my thumbnails with the doors open. And now the doors are open in my thumbnails, so I try to retake the icons with the doors closed. It still keeps them open, so I'm always going to have open doors on my icon. But at least I'm doing icons now, so when I pop that screen up for the videos, you don't have question marks all over the place like we used to. Um, I'm hiding these just for a moment. I'm going to put them back in when we're done, though. All right, so batteries will come on. And I can't remember if there's a separate fuel tank selector in this. I don't think so. I think fuel is just selected. I thought there's a fuel tank selector. I must be confusing it with... I know the Piper Archer has a fuel tank selector. I thought this did too. Whoops, I did not mean to trim myself. Um, but while I'm at it, I might as well put it back to where it was. There we go. Let's see. Let's get some lights on. There aren't many lights available. There's some missing. We'll turn those on. Um, let's see what else we're going to do. Let's prime this thing. And let's get our fuel in. Our mixture in. 
Yeah, we'll do throttle a little bit. And um, let's start this up. Shouldn't be too difficult. There we go. Our RPM gate is over there. We'll let that warm up a minute. Then we'll pull carb heat out. Pytot heat. Does that dual night work? It does. Nice. It's too bright to see anything, but it does work. Um, these also adjust your dials and things. Otherwise, pretty simple. Not much going on. Um, well, the fuses work. I don't dare mess with those. Flaps, cabin air. Might as well give us some air. Give us a little bit of heat. I don't know what the actual temperature is in real life. I didn't really think about that. Let's put you back in. Where's the click spot? There you are. This click spot, I think we can put this back in. We don't... Yeah, we'll need our landing lights. And... Well, can I see them? Okay, I can operate them from here. All right. That is it. We'll just do car in a little bit. So let's hop over to our radios. We are going to do two VORs. We're going to fly towards 116.5. Which hopefully will pick it up. I don't know if it's in the sim or not. Oh, there it is. And we're going to approach at 60 degrees. How do I get this to go? There we go. We got to go all the way around. There we go. And then we'll leave that VOR at 30 till we pick up the VOR at the other airport. And we'll approach the other airport at 89 degrees on a different VOR. Pretty simple. Um, I don't have much else to say because there isn't much else to say. Um, so let's see here. We're going to head out to runway 14. We're going to take off. It's that simple. So let's get the parking brake off, and I think we're going to cruise right along. Yeah, we are. There we go. Move that mouse. Let's hop outside the taxi, like usual. All right, we're approaching one way 14, and for some reason, this thing really pulls to the left on me. I'm not sure why. Can I get to my landing light? I can. Let's go over here and close our window while I'm trying to not go the wrong way. Let's get some flaps down. Oops, let's go back. Forward view, there we go. Oh my gosh. Um, what just happened? I'm having a really hard time with this aircraft. What is going on? Wait a second. You see that? My parking brake stuck? No. What's happening out here? Okay, watch this. Look at Um Why is this happening? Is this plane not usable in X Plane eleven? What's going on? Just bring the flaps in, see what happens. So okay, what's going on? I don't understand what's going on. I can't control Okay now it's working. I don't I don't understand what that was. That's like similar to the issue I have in the beaver ever since X Plane eleven. It has to be an X Plane eleven thing. Anyway, I'll worry about that later. Let's get up in the sky here. Huh, that was very strange. It's like a brake gets stuck or something. Weird. I have no idea what that was. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just get out of here and enjoy the sights and get on with our... Get on with ourselves. Okay, this is just going wherever it wants. I have, like, no control over this aircraft right now. Bizarre. Weird. Oh, well, we'll just let it go. Let it do its own thing. Yeah, see, the wheels aren't spinning. It's like the... Oh, gosh, I'm not doing that. What? It's like the wheels are have the brakes on or something. Anyway, there's the city of Karla. Karla back there on top of the aircraft. We're going to head that way. I guess the plane wants to head that way on its own, so that's where it's going to go. Um, <laughs> wow. What is going on? Anyway, let's come down here and turn your landing lights off. Let's do our carb heat. Um, and I have a feeling we're out of control. There we go. Okay. Very strange. But let's get over it and move on. 
There's the airport already. We'll just run parallel to it here so we don't get in the way of other air traffic. Again, there is no autopilot. Pretty view of the city there. There we go. How nice is that? Very cool. And over the ocean we go. And we are lined up with our VOR already. That was very coincidental. Well, we're close to being lined up, I guess. Let's get actually lined up. And then head towards 60 degrees, because right now we're heading north. There we go. And there's more of mainland Estonia in front of us. Off on the horizon. And my trim is so whack. There we go. And there's the island. Of course, it's a gigantic island. No secret there. All right, so we'll just head east until we get our VOR perfectly lined up, and then we will head 60 degrees. Very nice, very beautiful indeed. Alright, we're about lined up with our VOR, so let's head back to 60 degrees and we'll just fly this thing until we get to the VOR and then we will exit at 30 degrees. And that, folks, is all there is to it. So I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to turn up my sim volume and my headphones very loud. And I'm just going to chase that needle. And I'm going to climb, I don't know, up to like 5,000 feet just to the base of the clouds. I don't have any intention on going into the clouds. Although maybe I will just a little bit for the scenery. But this is a VFR flight, even though I'm using... VORs because I like to mix and match. So we'll just climb slowly and chase that needle and I'll catch you in a little bit. So just a quick update for you, we're about to cross our first VOR. You can see we're right exactly on target, 60 degrees inbound, we couldn't be more spot on. Our heading is a little off, our heading is about 68 in order to track that 60 in. We've talked about tracking versus heading before, and if you look at those PAPI, you see the military airport, which is where the VOR is, we're not going to land there, we're going to go right over it. And then we'll leave at um, 30 degrees and then we'll pick up our other our other VOR because the airport itself that we're landing is just over whoops uh, just over there it's not brought in yet so the um, 
Payware scenery hasn't loaded yet, of course. But anyway, there's your update. We're about to cross over the VOR, and then we'll change our heading and head towards Talon. And there it goes. We have crossed the VOR, so now we'll move this to 30 degrees just for a little bit. And then we'll switch to our other VOR after we track this for a mile or two. So let's pull back a little bit and we'll head this direction. Like so. We'll go about, let's see, what's that? 18 degrees, 15, 10. Let's just stay here because we're close enough. It's not really going to... There we go. Now we're finding it. Now let's go back to 30. Try to meet it in the middle. And, oh, we're almost there. There we go. Ta-da. And there we go. So we'll track this for a short time here. And reestablish herself at 100 knots, because that's what her trim is set for. There we go. So now our other VOR, Talon, is 112.2. So we'll go to 112.2. And we want 89. So what we're going to do, there's 90, 89. Is we're just going to, whoops, we're going to stay about between 20 and 30 degrees. Right now I know we're 10. We'll work our way back. And then the plan is when we intercept that 90 or that 89 degrees, we'll turn to the right and that should give us a direct straight approach to the airport. And that's all we have to it. There's no MIA gap or anything. We already picked up the other VORs, so now it's just going to Hang out until that needle starts to move. And once it starts to move and get sensitive, we'll know we're close. And we'll line up and land. Of course, I totally forgot to get that. Oh no, I did get the altitude of the airport. 131 feet above sea level. I did not, however, write down the altitude to intercept glide slope, but that's okay. We're in a little aircraft. Their the runway is so huge. We can come down any time and we got plenty of runway. We can always circle to and tour the city. But anyway, we'll stay about this heading. I'll bump ourselves a little, little to the right. And then I'll tune in or check in with you once we get some movement on that needle for the VOR. All right, the needle for our VOR is starting to move. So once it gets closer to the center, we'll change our own heading to 89 degrees, which is pretty much east. And then I believe we're about 18 or so miles out, nautical miles from the airport. But when we make this turn, as long as we keep our VOR lined up, our dial lined up, then we will, um. We should see the airport straight, exactly straight ahead. We'll start our turn now gradually though. Maybe that's a little yeah, maybe that's a little too soon yet. So what you're looking at is you're looking at open water with my dark cloud shadows turned on, but not fully dark. But um that's what you're looking at, so if you're wondering why it doesn't look like plain old water, that's why. And let's turn a little bit more. And then we'll start coming down pretty soon. We're at 4,580 feet above sea level. Turn a little bit more. 
And there's Talon. Talon. Talon coming into view. Alright, let's turn a little faster now. So we don't blow past the runway. Because the whole point of this is to line up perfectly with the runway. And there we go. We're going to make it. There's 87, 8, 9, 90, 91 on the dial. So let's go back a little bit. There's 90, and we're almost lined up perfectly on our gauges. I don't see the airport out there, though. But in theory, we should be perfectly lined up. And there it is. So it looks like we're going to have a slight angle of attack from the side, just a little. But like I said, this is the published approach. 89 degrees is supposed to bring us pretty much straight in. But Anyway, there you go. So if you want to look at Talon, Talon doesn't look like the scenery is actually loaded fully yet. Oh yeah, it's popping in. There it is. There it just popped in. So there you go. That is all payware from the org store. It's a little hazy. We're probably not going to get a very good sight scene tour of it, but I have a whole video dedicated to this scenery. So go ahead, search that on the channel, and you'll be able to see this for yourself in detail. We're just going to land at the airport. And then there's a few things I noticed about this aircraft that aren't working in X-Plane 11 that I'll talk about after we land. But otherwise, we're just going to come in um, don't know if we should start coming down quite yet. We'll do a little bit more sightseeing and then we'll, then we'll start coming down. Um, I noticed there's an island out here. That's pretty cool. This body of water I wrote down is the Gulf of Finland. So Finland is on the other side of the water mass. You can't see it. My visibility distance is turned down too much to see. But otherwise, there we are. Maybe we should start coming down a little bit. Whoops, we were kind of drifting away here because I was doing my sightseeing. Let's um, come down a little bit. I don't see any pappy, but... Oh, now I see the pappy. Yeah, we're way too high. But we can definitely lose altitude in a hurry in this thing. Wow, that's quiet. Alright, so I guess I could go visual since we are technically VFR. Or I could use my gauges like this and just chase needles without looking out the window and then pop up and see if we're right, which I know we are. But So 4,000, we're going to come down quite a bit. I'm actually going to bring my throttle back more and just chase needles a little bit here. See the gauge moving for the VOR. All right, there we're better lined up. Let's pop out, and there we go, exactly as we should be. But, um, so I'm not, I don't remember this angle of attack being this much on the approach plate. Maybe it's something with the sim, or maybe it's just, I didn't realize it. But there it is. There's all your payware scenery right there. It all fits into that shot. Actually, let's screenshot that. And um, pay attention to what I'm doing here. There we go. So the payword comes all the way out to here. Which is quite some distance, actually. Oh, it goes out there a little bit, too. Forgot about that. Whoa. The reason for the stuttering is because my recording has reached an hour. And whenever Bandicam reaches exactly an hour, it stutters for a couple seconds. It still catch See, it's still catching up. Not a good time for that, but anyway. So there we go. There's some nice screenshot material. A couple screenshots there. Piano Factory is right off the wingtip. Very nice. Are my landing lights on or I turn them off? I can't tell from here. Let's turn them back on. There we go. All right. Still can't see the Pappy for some reason. Got binoculars. There we go. Still too high. Not that I'm terribly worried. But we'll do as much sightseeing as we can on our approach. We're going slow enough. And then if we need to, we'll use the replay feature to sightsee more. But my landings have gotten much better ever since I've stopped sightseeing during my approaches. We can probably put these up too now. Somehow, there we go. There we go. See a lot more of the front. 
I'm still keeping my speed up. I have no reason to slow down. Plus, there would be large jets here. And we'd be in their way. Some stadium stuff going on. Maybe it's football. AKA soccer. Wow, it's nice to fly into some paywar scenery. Even though I really, 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 really do like default scenery and autogen I've talked about that before but this is really nice in fact we're getting quite a bit of yeah that's be a football stadium as in soccer um, very cool all right hold your speed speed is still plenty good we're still high though anything else this side to look at oh yes of course there is oh of course there is what's my there it is that one very cool Still too high, I guess. Okay. Still coming in hot, so I'll bring the throttle back a little bit more. I don't think I really need to be in the white arc until I'm halfway over this lake. We got so much runway. Plus, I think we need to park on the opposite side. I can't remember. There we got one red on the pappy. Two. All right, so let's level off now, because now we're like 1,000 feet. Let's minute. Let's level off to about 500, and that should keep us on glide slope, and so far so good. We're about to reach a white arc. We're almost halfway over the lake, which I predicted we would be. Sometimes I think I might actually know what I'm doing. It's always reassuring. We're going slow enough, I'm just going to get my sightseeing out of the way now, and then we'll not have to spend so much time doing replays as we have been in the past couple videos. There's a main terminal area there, so yeah, we'll definitely park on the other side. Nice. Dropped a little low because I was sightseeing, but like I said, we're going slow enough. It doesn't really matter. How many flaps are we going to use? I think we'll just use two sets, or maybe just one even. First set of flaps. There we go. A little bit of drag. We dropped a little below glide slope, but that's okay. We'll survive. Very cool. Second set of flaps, a little more throttle because we're getting kind of slow. Actually, no, we're not. We're in a Cessna. What am I thinking? I was thinking we're in there to an Otter or something. In fact, we're actually going kind of fast for Cessna now that I'm putting my brain in to putting my brain to work. Here we go. We'll just float over this. We are in no hurry to touch down. There we go. We'll just hold it off as long as we can. We're 10 feet per minute. Less than 10 feet per minute. There we go. Whoa. Hmm. Well, not too bad, but could have been better. I just was expecting us to be sitting higher above the ground when we landed. I keep forgetting in these small planes, it looks like you're on the ground. Let's get some air going here. I said get some air going. Come on. Come on, why won't that? Oh, we're going too fast, probably. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, don't know where we're going. Um, where are we going? Oh, there's some GA. So let's get off here. Actually, let's. Okay, see, now I'm able to turn. In the beginning of the flight, I wasn't. Whoa. Huh. That's interesting. So now it's letting me now it's letting me use the rudder. I know we're going really fast, but now can I open my windows? Yes. Huh. Um where did I see that GA? Actually let's turn our taxi lights oh that's in the way. Taxi lights off. I mean landing lights off. This airport is so big, I'm having a hard time, like, being patient enough. Like, we just now crossed the stop line. Okay, we're having that problem again. Just like we did in the beginning of the flight. I can't turn. What is going on? I also notice that my rudder is backwards 
Okay, is this gonna let us go? Now we can go. I just had to like put full throttle and it still isn't. What in the world? It must be like a weird friction thing. Just like the beach did until I updated it. So there are clearly some problems. Clearly some problems with this being an X-Plane 10 aircraft. For example, if you look at my tail, see the... Oh gosh, not the... Hey, those aren't aliens if they're on the tail, are they? Anyway, see how the right... I guess my mouse is working. See how here this is up and that's flat? And then see how the rudder is backwards? See? Couple things there that are causing... Okay, now let's see if I can... If I go fast enough, it lets me turn. But if I slow down... Like if I slow down and pull in here, and then I try to turn. Well, now it's working. Oh, see, that's going to get stuck again. Yeah. Yeah, see. I had the same issue in that other Carinado aircraft until, yeah, until. So I don't know if they're going to update this one or not. If they do, I won't repurchase this one. Um, I don't use it very much. We are. I know we're not. I know we're not in the right spot. This is for vehicle traffic. I know. I'm just trying to get around this because I went the wrong way. We're just gonna park right here. No, oh, this is all. It's gonna stop us again. Darn it. Anyway, come on, come on. Full throttle. There we go. And then of course, once you snap out of it, you go flying. Come on. Whatever. We'll just stop right there. Hop inside. Whoops. Wrong one. Set the parking brake. My goodness. Um, beacon can come off. We'll kill that. This can go in. That's, that could have gone in a long time ago. Whoa. There we go. We'll turn this off. Turn the batteries off because they're loud. There we go. Open up some doors. And, um, I was trying to use this clock to do my flight time, but that did not stay. <laughs> that was way different than what I actually have recording, so we'll see. I do know, or I read, that if you drop below 20 frames per second, it actually stretches time, so it can catch up. So maybe I'll blow 20 frames per second there, and it stopped time a little bit, where the real-life clock kept going, but the sim clock stopped or slowed down. Maybe that's why that clock shows way less time than my real time. Not sure. Doesn't really matter. But welcome to Tallinn, Tallinn, Estonia. Um, let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see the... Yeah, there we go. So all this is payware. From way over there to way over there. It's not that expensive. And it's good. It gets some European-style buildings in the sim, which is nice. Although, next version of X-Plane, I believe, will have some more European-style buildings. But that's okay. When I purchased this, that was not an option. But anyway, I like the scenery. This is only the second time I've used it, so... I like to revisit stuff I've paid for. Again, I got this because of a piano factory. And I invite you to watch that video, just like I invite you to watch all the other videos, just like I invite you to subscribe and like and share with your friends. I don't think there's much else to say about this, other than that was exhausting for me to fly. One, it's a small, slow plane affected by every bit of wind. Two, it was a very long distance for a small plane. Three... No autopilot, and four, the model is clearly broken. There were some things going on in the air, too, that were frustrating that I didn't blab about. But that's okay. It's not Carinado's fault. This is an X-Plane aircraft, X-Plane 10 aircraft in X-Plane 11. So we'll take it off from time to time, but um, I don't have very high expectations for it. And there you go. Instead of talking for another half an hour, I'll just catch you on the next one.